In this video, we're gonna go through calculating second order rates. So I wanna look at a specific example and look at how we calculate rates and a half-life in second order reactions. So the specific example that I wanna look at is the following reaction. So we have C4H6 butadiene, and it can go through what's called a dimerization reaction. So dimerization. And basically what that means is that if you have two molecules of the same type that come together and form uh, form a new molecule, right? So you got two butadienes coming together to form C8H12. So you usually have these two butadienes coming together to form some cyclic octane. So you got C8H12 as the resulting product uh, of two butadienes coming together uh, and reacting to form C8H12. So we've got some data here. What I want to go through is go uh, do is go through the data and we're going to calculate the rate constant and we're going to calculate the half-life for this second order reaction. So how do we know that it's second order? Well, let's take a look at the data. We got two different plots here. We got the natural log of the concentration of butadiene um, with respect to time. And we have the inverse of the concentration of butadiene with respect to time. Now, if we look at the natural log of concentration plot, we notice that we don't get a straight line, right? This is definitely a curved line here. Whereas when we plot the inverse of the concentration over time, there we get a straight line linear relationship. And so with that, we actually end up with a, um, a, a correlation here. So we know that it's going to be second order because this inverse of the concentration with respect to time gives us a linear relationship. So we know that the um, the integrated rate law for a second order reaction is going to be the one that'll yield a linear plot here. So um, so if we wanna get the, uh, the rate constant, right? So we know that the integrated rate law for this is going to have look like the following, right? So we're gonna have a concentration of C4H6, inverse equal to KT, plus the initial concentration. Right, so we know that this will be the, uh, the integrated rate law since we know that this reaction will follow second order reaction kinetics. Now for the rate constant, um, we know that we can actually calculate the rate constant by getting the slope of this line, right? Because we have this linear relationship between the inverse of the concentration and time. So if we just calculate the slope, then we get the um, then we can get the rate constant k here. So we're going to find the slope to determine the rate constant. And so basically we can just use some of this data here, right? So we've got some data um, that we can make use out of in order to calculate the slope, right? We've got um, 6,200 seconds worth of data that we can make use out of. So we're going to say that we know that K is gonna be equal to the slope. Slope is just gonna be the rise over run, right? Delta Y over Delta X. And so in this case, that's going to be Delta one over the concentration of C4H6 over delta T, right? The change in time. So, um, so all we have to do here is just plug everything in. So we're gonna go from zero to uh, 6,000 seconds. So that's going to be 481. Right, and being very careful with the units here, since this is inverse concentration, the units that you're dealing with is actually liter per mole. Right, because uh, concentration is mole per liter. So since this is the inverse, you're gonna flip that. This is liter per mole. So 481 minus 100 liter per mole. And that's gonna be over 6,200 seconds as our total time elapsed, right? Okay, so here you end up with a rate constant that is uh, K is equal to 6.14 times 10 to the negative two liters per mole per second, right? So this is our rate constant for this reaction. Now notice that the rate constant 
in this case for a second order reaction is actually going to have different units than a first order reaction. Keep in mind, first order reaction, our rate constant was just uh, per time. So per second, per minute, per hour. Here, we're actually measuring liter per mole per second, right? Um, so that's just because of the different relationship that you have between time and the, uh, the, um, the variable that yields this straight line relationship. In a first order reaction, it's the natural log of the concentration, unitless, right? Here is the inverse of the concentration. So you're actually going to have a unit here uh, for that's related to the concentration for the rate constant. Perfectly fine, since this is just a constant that's relating to variables. Okay, so, uh, so that's our rate constant for this second order reaction. Now let's calculate the half-life. So if we want to calculate half the half-life, Then we're going to use our T1 half expression here. So where T1 half is equal to one over K times the initial concentration of butadiene, right? Now we don't necessarily have our um, initial concentration directly, right? We have the inverse of the initial concentration. So we actually have to solve for that, but that's going to be pretty easy, right? We know that if we want the constant, the initial concentration, Right, well, this guy is just the inverse, so it's just gonna be equal to one over 100, right? And then you flip the units as well, so this is back to molar. Then that means that our initial concentration is 0 0.01 molar. So all we have to do here is just plug in and solve to get our half-life, right? So we got one over. Now we're gonna take our rate constant and plug it in here, so we got 6.14 times 10 to the negative two liters per mole per second, right? And then we have our initial concentration, 0 0.01 moles per liter. Right, so you wanna make sure that your units check out here, right? Which it looks like they do. Moles cancels out, liters cancels out, and so you're left with just seconds as your units, which makes sense because we're looking for a time, right? Keep in mind, the, the half-life always has to be a time here. So we got 1.63 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Right, so this would be the time it would take in order for the initial concentration to, uh, to decrease by half. Right. So uh, so in this uh, example here, we were able to take an example of a second order reaction, get its integrated rate law, write it out explicitly, calculate the rate constant and also calculate the half life um, in this example. Right. So always with the half life uh, calculations for especially for anything that's not a first order reaction, you want to make sure you're explicitly checking your units to make sure you're doing these things right. Because if you if you have something that's not time that's sticking around you may have made a mistake it could be a simple unit mistake but it could also indicate a larger mistake as well so always make sure you're checking your units on everything but definitely with these half-life um calculations for anything that's not a first order reaction it can get somewhat tricky